I am getting ready to go on an epic five hour adventure glacier hike with a few other people and some experienced hikers. Your girl is got plans to do a lot of cool stuff that involves hiking and I love hiking because that is the best way that I can show you uh, the landscape of a particular area, what it has to offer, what it looks like. Uh, you know, I'm not really a city girl when it comes to adventure. I like to get out there and so we're doing that today. Now, let's get you guys to the school real quick. this for me. Uh, both shoes are the same size? Yes. Not super often though. I'm so stoked that we're about to hike a glacier that's more than a thousand years old. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this adventure. Thank you. Okay, we got a harness. I guess we're climbing up the side of an ice mountain. We need harnesses for safety. This is gonna be wild, guys. Look how beautiful it is out here. I never thought in a million years that I'd be hiking a glacier in Alaska. I mean, just look at the water. It's beautiful. It's, it's glacier melt-off water, and it's pretty deep. You know, we have to walk on a floating bridge, uh, which I think is freaking cool. But as I look around, it's, it's becoming real. You know, we... We can't just hike though just yet. We have to put on our custom um, metal cleats that will give us really good grip on the ice, but it's starting to become real. I'm actually about to hike on a glacier. And I'll check them all before we start going. Okay, while my team is putting on their ice shoes, of course, you know, I'm going to be fast. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I still got to get mine tightened, but check out the view. And uh, standing on solid ice. kind of just take you one at a time we can stem over it you can look down into it so let's look inside around. 
around and step over this. So he found us some water, a uh, glacier water source that we're about to try. You know me, I'm going to try anything, so I'm going to wait my turn. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's ice cold. Mm. Oh, this is really good. Oh man, this is good. Okay, now we fill it. Yeah, we're taking some of this with us. Wow, Glacier Water Fam. No, I'm taking this with me. Yes. <laughs> have a lot of climbing to do. Good workout. Beautiful views. This is insane. We're about to climb up there. Insane. Somebody was singing Eye of the Tiger. We need that. Ugh. There we go. As we're all standing there taking a quick break, none of us in the group was prepared for what we were about to be told. Uh, so, what we'll be doing, guys, is we'll be going down over that way, and we're going to come to a spot where we got, I've got some room set up, and uh, we'll have you guys rappel down into the bottom of this little valley here. So, uh, just, you know, stay a good distance away from the ledge. I know you're really curious to see how your friends are doing, um, but. Uh, you know, we don't want to have to divide our attention between the person that's on a rope that we're keeping safe and you guys over here. We want to make, you know, we just want to know that you guys are in a safe spot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. We're clipping on the uh, the belay device and all that stuff for you to make sure it's on properly. Uh, but when you get down to the bottom, you're going to have to um, unclip it just like that, dangling Good. off your carabiner, mm -hmm. and you'll clip it onto the uh, to the blue rope so we can pull it back up. The rule is you never let go of your brake strand. Your brake strand is the, the strand of rope going out of the bottom of this little device here, okay? Always holding on to that. Always have it down by your hip, okay? You can have one hand underneath the device like this, the other hand over, down by your hip. What you're gonna do is you're just slowly gonna let that rope through. As you do that, you're just gonna take these little waddle stomps backwards, just like this. Notice how I am leaning back this rope is nice and taut, okay? As our guide was explaining to us how to rappel down the side of a glacier for the first time, because none of us has ever done it, I didn't realize that I would be the first to volunteer when they asked for volunteers. Let's just say as I was rappelling down, 
I felt like I was in a 007 movie. Looking at your feet, okay? Looking at your feet, looking at the terrain beneath you, seeing how it changes, right? It'll get a little bit steeper in some spots, a little bit less steep in other spots. <laughs> I came from up there and now we're kind of in the belly, in the mouth of of a glacier. Isn't that just beautiful? One thing I love about hiking that it allows me to see things that I normally wouldn't see unless I hike. But also to what is kind of a little bit scary about hiking is that you always have to be prepared for the unexpected because you never know what you will encounter. You may have to change directions because your route is messed up. You may come across a crazy animal, but nonetheless, you have to be prepared. And thankfully, our guides were prepared for this unexpected turn. <laughs> Drew, when was the last time you walked over here? It's been a while. Me too. I, this thing's gotten big. It has. I agree. No, no, this is for real. Uh, if you give me a second, I'll build you a little something you can check it out with. So right now he is building something so that we're able to hook to it to see the big massive hole or crevice that is down there uh, because we can't just look over it safely because if we fall in we can wedge and that's not safe. <laughs> So the way we were supposed to go was back there when I showed you guys the crack that we got to look into. We didn't go that way because the crack was so big. They were afraid that if we jumped over and somebody slipped, we would get wedged in the crack. So now they are forming, uh, putting some rope, laying some rope down so that we can go that way um, using these. So we gotta do some more rope work to get through the glacier that way. And uh, they told us to kind of stand by and wait while they put ropes and anchors and steps for us. So they're making eye steps, which is actually really cool. Um, these guys are extremely experienced. You can definitely tell they know what they're doing. He's tossing a rock to see if we can hear it hit the bottom of this massive hole. Oh! oh. oh. It is really deep. He threw it in that hole right there. It's pretty deep. That was cool. 
but this is how we had to cross over these massive holes that if you fall in you're pretty much gone we hook these two onto the blue rope and at each point in the blue rope we unhook it and hook it again and just hold the blue rope all the way so that if we do fall we got two points of contact the whole time so that we're hanging and not just falling free fall in these holes hopefully that makes sense so we'll watch her come across See how she's holding the blue rope? Going up the ice stairs they made for us. Then she's gonna get to that point and then she's gonna unhook her two hooks and then hook it again on the other side of that point and walk all the way here. It is starting to get really, really cold out here. At first it was warm, it felt good. But since we're between these glaciers behind me, the wind is bouncing off the ice and it is freezing. I do have my rain jacket, but I'm just too late to get it out. And I do have gloves, but I'm good. I think we still got two more hours. I mean, we're, we're out here making progress and getting a lot of like cool experience and doing a lot of cool things. So, man. Okay. Uh, no one's behind me, so I can't tell them. And then we're going to take this rope and go up like that. This is so cool. Lots of experience. This is what I love. This is the adventure I crave. This is what I love. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at how, how beautiful our creator's work is. God is the master artist. You can't tell me anything, anything different. We are coming to the end of our hike. And uh, wow, isn't that beautiful? Look at all that water. Glacier water. So right now I am I'm tired. Uh, ooh, that hike took a lot out, took a lot out of me, but nonetheless I am making dinner. I'm making um, tuna with um, cherry tomato and scrambled eggs, and I'm using balsamic and herb tuna that is in uh, olive oil. Uh, I don't want to use butter or anything, so I'm just using the oil from the tuna to cook the cherry tomatoes and the eggs. And so that's what we're going to be eating tonight.
this is what we have so far. I added another can of tuna. So this is two cans of tuna, the balsamic and herb in olive oil, tomatoes, and now we are cooking three eggs. We're gonna fry it and we're gonna throw it right on top and that's gonna be dinner. Okay, almost done, not quite yet. Let that cook a little more. Okay, I cleaned up and I flipped my egg. I didn't do a good job of flipping it, but it's done now. I don't want to overcook it. So we're going to unplug it and then we're going to put it, those beautiful eggs on top of this. So it's plated. The egg yolk is soft. I wanted it to be a little runny, but I kept it on warm too long, but it is soft, not overcooked, which I like. And I'm going to use some of this zero calorie, zero everything, except 55 milligrams of sodium. I'm going to throw this, uh, it's where is it at? Ketchup. I eat this meal because it's packed with protein. Um, it keeps me satiated all day. And uh, it's been be becoming one of my favorite types of meals to eat, honestly. It's simple, it's easy, lots of protein. Um, very healthy for you. Mm-hmm. I probably won't finish all the tuna. I'm gonna try though but this is wonderful these tomatoes mm. delicious The ketchup seasoning actually tastes like ketchup. I don't know if I needed it because of the, bas the bas balsamic and herb flavor from the tuna. But it ain't bad. It ain't bad at all. So the drive here to Alaska was brutal. I know I kept saying Alaska Highway or Alaskan. It is what it is. I know it's the Alcan, Alcan Highway, Alcan Highway, but all the signs didn't say Alcan. It said Alaska, so that's why I kept calling it Alaska Highway. Um, it was an experience I'll never forget. I saw so many beautiful wildlife. Um, a lot of you are wondering about the roads. I would say there a good portion of the highway, uh, Alcan or Alaska Highway. Um, the roads, I would say 90% of the roads are good, but then you got those parts of the roads where it's nothing but gravel, big rocks, chunks of rock, lots of dips, um, just washboard roads. I uh, remember I showed you guys, I had two chips in my window at the end of the drive. I had four going on a gravel highway behind a semi truck. They kicked up a lot of rocks and it put two chips uh the size of dimes or smaller in my window so now i have four i fixed one of the chips so i still have to fix three more but it was a rough drive it was a beautiful drive um i'm just glad i didn't have any issues because you can you imagine breaking down in the middle of the alaska highway uh <laughs> by the way no cell phone service I don't care what carrier you have zero unless you have Starlink which I don't have I have Starlink in the Subaru but it's not for cell phone purposes it's for SOS purposes so if I did break down I just hit the SOS button I'll be good but other than that um, no cell phone service until you hit like a small town and um I was good on gas. Uh, I didn't need the extra gas cans because I didn't realize just how good the gas mileage on my Subaru is. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. Oh, this yolk is nice and soft. I wish it was a little runny.
to put my fan on. <clears throat> mm. What's so unique about the glacier that I hiked? The glacier is on public land. It's publicly owned. But the road leading to the glacier is a private road. So one man owns that road. It was in his family for generations, and he, he has it now. And he's a millionaire because of that one road that leads to the glacier. So if you want to see a public glacier, you have to pay to enter in on that road. So every person or every vehicle that enters in on that road, you pay. That man is swimming in money, but he also works um, works the area around the glacier. You know, he's responsible for making sure the floating bridge is operational. He doesn't have to, but because he's rich, but he does because he enjoys it. I think he's in his sixties. He has a he has a couple of planes that he flies. He's just living life, but he you would never know he's a millionaire because of that road. He just he loves to work. He loves to get down. He, he does a lot. And he keeps the, the, the property in the area very, very well kept. Very clean. Very, very nice. He's one of those guys, he'll do it himself before he hires anybody. Unless it's something he can't do, then he'll hire somebody to do it. Like he hired people to do the floating bridge. But he was there, I was told by the our guides, because they have a good working relationship with him. He was there for the whole construction of that floating bridge. I don't, I think I showed you guys a little bit. Yeah, the, the bridge that we were, I was walking on before we started the hike and you saw that glacier melt off water. Yeah, he hired people to build that bridge, but he, and he was there for the construction of it. Mm, mm, mm. As far as moose, I'm thinking about all the questions I, I, I was seeing in the comments and that I could answer. Someone said, you know, next time you see a moose, take a picture of it. Why you didn't take a picture of the moose? I didn't have my camera out. I didn't have it ready. By the time I grabbed it, the moose was already, it was already in the grass eating. And it wasn't a male moose. It was a female moose because it didn't have the antlers. I was told that females were the ones without the antlers. The males have the antlers. And by the time I grabbed my camera, she had already ran back into the forest. So I could not get a picture of her. It's not like the bears. The bears stick around and eat. They don't care. The moose, the deer, they see you. They run. 